Hey guys, what's up? This is Jordan Crook with TechCrunch, and we are backstage at Disrupt New York 2013. I'm here with David Tisch, who is the founder of Box Group. Hey. Thanks for having me. So you just got off the panel uh, about venture. We did. How do you feel about it? It was good. I, I think Alexi asked the right questions, right? We hit on what are the changes in venture, uh, sort of the brand question of how do you differentiate if you're an entrepreneur between investors, and I think at the end we hit on uh, you know, the women issue and, um, you know, the emergence, I think, of these lifestyle businesses, which I chatted about, which I think is probably the most disruptive thing going on right now within our industry. Yeah, and I really like what you said about, like, you hate when an investor says, uh, oh, I need to go check with my wife when he's approached by a woman. Like, there's no need for that, right? Yeah, I think that's nonsense, right? And so I'm in the business of hearing pitches all day. Yeah. If a pitch comes in and it's just because it's a woman, it doesn't mean that I'm not able to evaluate it just like all the other pitches. Exactly. So instead of saying, oh, oh, this is this is different, let me go ask somebody, right. look at it like every other company you see. Now, if you don't have an expertise in an area, mm -hmm. solve it like you would any other area where you don't have expertise. So if it's fashion, go learn about fashion. Don't turn to, let's say, your wife and say, honey, you understand about fashion. Come look at this company. Right, right, right. She He's not a venture capitalist. You are. Do your job. Yeah, you're the one who understands business. Correct. Yeah. And so I think it's nonsense to try to bring in sort of a different demographic of people to evaluate. And look, if it's a teen or tween business, you can do some market analysis or research to go talk to teens and tweens and see if this is something that they would use. Right. But that's totally different than the, oh, I, I can't evaluate this. Right, right. Nonsense. Totally agreed with you. Total nonsense. Okay, let's talk just for a minute about Box Group. How cool. long has it been? So uh, I've been full-time at Box Group since about August of last year, but Box Group's been around since 2007 uh, and super active since about 2009. We're in 90, uh, 95 companies uh, wow. as investors. And so wait, does that include everything from your Techstars days No, as well? so, so Box Group is totally separate from Techstars. there is some overlap. So out of the 95 companies, 12 were, uh, went through the Techstars program. I think probably a similar number went through Y Combinator. We have a couple of 500, uh, 500 startups companies. Cool. So accelerator agnostic right. uh, investing and, you know, 85% or 80% of our companies never went through an accelerator, so there's oh. definitely not a, a focus on post-accelerator investing. Right, you're not biased either not biased. way. Nope. Okay, well, <clears throat> I, was, I was really interested in what Fred Wilson said this morning. I don't know if you heard, but he said, you know, the best way to get my attention if you're trying to pitch to me is to tell me, like, you know, something really bold right out the gate. Like, I'm going to build something totally stupid. So, like, if I'm approaching David Tisch and I want your money, how do I get it? I think, I think, you know, to tweak Fred's comment a little, it's, it's stand out. It's be yourself. And I actually think that that's what I'm looking for is genuineness. And so if I meet a founder and they're trying too hard, but it comes off as genuine, that's okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're over hustling, but it's like, it sort of makes sense and, and comes off as good hustling, right. that's okay. If you're passive and antisocial and awkward and that's your, like, fine, but just be yourself. And I think that there's this notion about, okay, I read six articles on TechCrunch and this is how they did it, so that's how I'm gonna do it. Right. And I think if you there really- There is no model. Well, it's, it's even beyond that. You can't repeat anybody's story. Because if you look at entrepreneurship, what this whole thing's about is creating your own story. Right. And so unless you're gonna create literally your own specific narrative, you're probably never gonna be a huge company. Because every one of these big companies that you guys cover, that all the blogs cover, have crazy cool stories involved. Like, you know, lawsuits and fights and founder breakups and all this stuff. Like, don't try to emulate that. Instead, create your own story and it's gonna get written about because it's probably gonna be interesting. Yeah. And so I think there's this notion about, okay, I read this on Mark Suster's blog and this on Fred's blog and this on Dixon's blog, and so I'm gonna go copy these tactics, when in reality, the more you're, you're just yourself, the better, uh, investors are to sort of be willing and wanting to listen to you. Right, the real story is the best one. Yeah, right? and who you are and why you're doing this is to me the two narrative pieces that are most interesting to me is what, and, and I think Naval said it is, you know, everything in your life has added up to this moment. Yeah. Get me to there and, and show me why we're here. Yeah. And I'm totally interested in listening. Very cool. Okay, I want to talk to you a little bit about New York, too, because, I mean... New York's it's awesome. It's our right? town, yeah, right? We are. Okay, so you're like my buddy in New York, and I've, I've noticed some changes in the past two years. You've been here a lot longer than I have. Um, and one of those things is, like, you know, we were talking about dilution of talent earlier. You know, I've heard from some New York-based companies who are like, you know, they used to run all their engineering out of ca California, and now they're like, no, let's bring them back to New York. Like, we, there's enough talent here to do that. 
I mean, what are your thoughts on kind of what the New York ecosystem is looking like in terms of talent? Well, I think New York is the future. Um, is if you look at where technology is disrupting right now, it's everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So you see, you know, technology pushing into finance, into fashion, into retail, into media, into every software is eating the world, right? And it is, and you're seeing that in every industry, right? And New York's the home to a ton of industries. Mm -hmm. New York's also the home to all the big brands and the big money advertising that goes into these businesses. So if right. you're starting a business, and today, one more step back is. It's easier to start businesses that are not really, really tech heavy. You're developing on the app stack, which is the, the most consumer facing layer. Right. And so you don't need this incredibly deep technology to build a lot of companies today or a lot of businesses that are tech enabled. Right. And I think that that lends itself more and more to New York because you have, you have you know, the big brands here, you have industries that are here. My favorite part in New York is I think it's the single best place in the world to beta test the product. Yeah, because of the concentration of people. There's, they all have the same problems, they share things instantly, and they're all like, okay, right but, there. Okay, but push even further. I actually think this city is the most interesting to beta test because there's such diversity that if you right. got on the subway and you got out at any stop, you have a totally different type of group of people right. to test your product on. That's so literally, point. if you just get on the subway, get off at every stop, show your product to 20 people and keep going for one or two days, right. you're going to learn more about your product in this city than anywhere else. And I think it's a diversity here that you can test out a product on that's the most fascinating, actually. Right. Okay, so outside of, this is my last question, I'll let you go. Out of, outside of the, the standard like mobile, social, local crap, what, what are you most excited about in terms of like where we're trending? Yeah, I think there's a, a bunch of things. One is hardware revolution, yes, right? We're I was seeing, hoping you were gonna say that. We've invested, you know, about 30% of our, our investments over the past year have been in hardware or physical stuff. Wow. Um, a lot of home automation and things like that. Uh, Smart Things is a company that we've backed. We're, we're incredibly uh, happy about that company. They're about to launch uh, cool. SmartThings.com. Fascinating, automates your, your home to this level that is, it's not like crazy automation, it's simple. And that's what's interesting to me. I think the, um, the other areas are consumer. And everybody's talking about enterprise and enterprise and enterprise, but the consumer market's the biggest market. Yep. It's the most, Fickle, and so the ability for a new product to just sort of launch and emerge now, I think, is uh, is is ripe a time as any, especially as the attention goes to the enterprise. If I talk to my normal friends, my non-tech friends, and you ask them, "Are you bored with what's on your phone?" I get a universal yes. Really? A, you, a, so if you're looking at your phone and you're standing by the subway or you're waiting to, to go somewhere, you can basically browse through Facebook stream, mm -hmm. Twitter stream, and Instagram st stream. And at some point, like most normal people only have one or two of those. Right. So they go through one or two of the streams and they're like, okay, I'm bored, what do I do? Right. You can't consume content mm -hmm. on a mobile phone. And so I think there's an ability for more streams to be invented to consume people's time. And so that's where you see the emergence of something like Wanalo or Pinterest. I think it stems from people just being bored and wanting more stuff to entertain them. And so I'm, I'm incredibly bullish on consumer right now. We're like hungry babies. That's yeah, consumers. right? Like, are you bored? <laughs> I'm bored. Right, you I wanna, am. right. So you want, and like, when you're bored, what's your first reaction? You pick up your phone. Right. And what do you do? You, you go to the things that have messages, and then you default to playing a game. Yeah, and I don't even do the messages right. anymore. Right, everybody's so sitting bored. here giving Candy Crush <laughs> dollar after dollar, and that's why they're the, the top revenue generating <laughs> right. thing on the app. But like, that's why games have worked on mobile so well, is people are bored, that I think what that lends to is an opportunity to build things that fill up my free time on my mobile phone. Right. Okay, so you're gonna give me your, your smart thing story, their launch, and I'm gonna tell you about my new favorite game. Deal. Deal? Thanks, Jordan. Thanks, David, appreciate I really it. appreciate it.